Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. And today I wanted to answer another video request and it is on creating a comic book inking brush in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll show you what I've already created, this little funky blotch here. And I'll recreate it for you so to, and explain the process of why I created it this way. At least a little bit anyways. And I tried a little dummy one right there and it didn't work too well. So... All right, so just create a canvas size of whatever you feel comfortable with and you think your system can handle. I do mine at, let's see if we go to pixels, 600 by 600 at 1,000 resolution. gives me a 1 meg file. Anywhere around about there, the main factors are a squared off image. I'll hit Control R so you can see. It's a basic, well, you can see it's a square. Anyways, it's a squared off image and essentially at a good resolution, uh, about a one meg document should be more than enough so that you can size the brush up and still get a pretty decent result. Now this type of brush we're not going to really size up very much anyways, so whatever. Alright, so what I do here is I try to think in terms of what I'm going to get as I create the brush effect. Now I'm thinking of a, a kind of a paintbrush tip or something and it would be less than perfect. So I want to give it some randomization, you know, some kind of effect there. Uh, I don't know if this matters a whole lot, but it it's better than just a circle. So you can make a pretty decent inking brush with a circle, but you're going to get a better effect if you do what I'm doing here. So kind of create this random shape and then fill it with black. So I'll create a new layer. Grab my paint bucket tool with black, drop that in there. Now the other thing that I noticed what makes for a little bit nicer brush is a bit of um, edging to it. Okay, instead of just a rough um, solid edge, I'll just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, 5.8 works good for me. I just want a little bit of soft edging to that. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And then to create this brush, you don't even have to flatten this down because it's only going to take a kind of a screenshot of what we got here. You just go to edit, define brush preset. Let's call this Rob's awesome inking brush because Rob is awesome. Oh, you get the point. I'll just show Rob's awesome inking brush. There we go. Hit OK. It immediately puts it as your current brush, which is nice because then you can just go to your your screen over here and start playing around. So I got a typical uh, canvas size that I might work at. You know, I usually work at 29, 40 megs, files, whatever. Obviously for an inking brush, I'm gonna scale this way down, but first I'll leave it about medium size here and I'll show you, wow, isn't that pretty cool? Not at all, that's pretty ugly. So let's get into the settings and figure out what we can do to make this cool. All right, so let's go to Shape Dynamics and let's see here, control to pen pressure. That gives us our thick to thin. So that's one thing that starts to help us out. And already it's looking a lot more like an inking brush, but I wanna give it a little bit more than that. And I also wanna show you one of the things that also goes into making the brush even work as well as this. So we'll get into that too, but shape dynamics there. Let's go, the other main factor, the rest of these are more for painterly effects. You know, you can get into like texturizing more. I mean, you could use that for inking a bit too, I guess, but uh, scattering for effect brushes. But for your traditional ink pen type brush or brush tip type effect, we're just gonna go to brush tip shape. And I'm gonna turn the spacing down a little bit more. We'll say five, I want a little bit of spacing in there. The main thing I wanna do is mess with the angle of this a little bit. I'm going to squish this down a little bit and turn it. Try something like that about there. A little bit thinner. Scale the brush down a bit more and see what we get. Yeah, and this is feeling a lot more like a like an inking brush, and I'll show you why. Zoom up so you can see this. Now when I, I do my passing uh, kind of sideways sweeping strokes, I can get a thicker kind of calligraphy kind of feel, and that's nice for inking. You know, and you'll you'll see when you start using it and you start doing some shapes and maybe you're at the side of a shoulder or something and you want this nice heavy line, you can get that really quickly with that angular effect and you'll get a feel for when, when you can do that and when you can't, when you need to rotate your canvas. 
but it's got a, a nice inking feel, nice brush tip feel. You, so you want that little bit of randomization to kind of give you some uh, ability to create some cool lines. Oh. Anyways, all right. Let's just paint that back with white. I should create another layer. Okay, so now let me show you it in action as far as cross hatching, which is what a lot of times people are asking me about and what they want to be able to make their brushes do. So just with that, I'm able to get some pretty nice feathered cross hatching. Now I do want to take it a step further and show you one more setting that I think will help and that I, I know will help me get even a little bit better line work. The one thing I'm seeing here, I'll zoom up and talk about real fast. See the edging is just a little bit off. It's because I'm applying too much pressure to get my feathered lines. So the other thing that makes that happen isn't just Photoshop. I'm using a Wacom tablet and the Wacom tablet itself is something that I have to be fully aware of with my settings to get just the right kind of cross hatching. Now if you like to do your cross hatching with one pull, this setting is actually better where I'm at. I actually like doing more of a feathered line. But it really depends. Like this is kind of nice for speed because uh, I'm not sitting there having to feather the lines. So this is a good setting for getting that thick to thin line and moving on. Not you know spending an absorbent amount of time doing the uh, feathering that I oftentimes find myself doing. Now for the feathered line I want a little bit more control where I'm not having to push down as hard to get the uh, the line weight that I want. And I'll show you how you do that. So you go down into your settings here, go to launch pad, Wacom, uh, does it desktop center on mine? Okay, go to pin and button settings, open them there. And you get this, you got to find this, uh, I know this is different for probably everybody's setup, but you got to find this window right here. Now look how I've got pressure set to firm all the way up here. That's a big part of what you're going to want to mess with with your inking. The rest of it, that's all up to you. You can play around with it and stuff, but uh, this is the main area that I want to talk about. So now if I bring this way down to like a soft feel, and let's just go ahead and minimize this, close this. And now let's see what we get with the same brush. So it's got this real kind of fat marker effect now. It's not pointing off very well at all, even though we've still got our shape dynamics on. I think this is what a lot of people right here have a problem with. So when they're asking me why they're not getting these types of effects and they've been messing around with their cross hatch and they can't seem to do it, that's probably the setting that you need. So keep that in mind that you'll need to mess with that a bit too. Let's open that up again and I want somewhere in the middle. Let me try to bring it one click over the halfway mark. See what we get there. And you should be able to tell just with the first few um, sweeps or strokes or whatever you want to call them. But Try to do a variety of your, your types of, uh, of lines. You know, whatever it is you're used to doing traditionally. Like I talk about in a lot of my videos, it's all about making these digital tools feel traditional. They can do it. They're fully capable of it. That's why they're on the market. That's why people use them. So you, if something's not right, it's probably in some kind of hardware setting. And you just got to really play around with it and figure it out. Alright, let me... I think I'm going to go back to firm one more. Maybe all the way. Let me see here. See, I, I like to play with the settings a lot. See, I really like the line that it gives just like that. I'm getting a really nice thick to thin. Really nice quick pulls. I'm not able to get the thicker line that I want. Let me try over here. You know, and it might just be the blunt end. So I might want to try one more, you know, because it's probably a, a good idea to have a few of these inking brushes. So let's try one more where instead of this blunt end that you see there, uh, I have one side that's got a uh, point to it. Now I generally pull down like this. 
And the part that I'm not liking as well is the area that it's doing up here. So I could either try to start that area to a point, because you're going to get the point off the bottom stroke because of the shape dynamics. So let's try that real quick. Let's take this and modify it one more time. So let me just get rid of that one, create a new one, grab the selection tool. Let's try the same kind of rigid shape, but then to a point. Let's see what we get here. And this is purely experimental. It may work, it may not. But this is this is how I figure stuff out. It's like a meteor heading towards the planet or something. All right, so there, fill it. Command D to deselect. Let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Hit OK. It's obviously already got all the settings saved. Edit. Define brush preset. Rob's super awesome inking brush. Okay. Automatically makes that our current brush. Go back over to here. Jump back into our settings. Shape dynamics. Spacing. Let's turn that down even further. Maybe even all the way off. But we'll try five. And... Shape dynamics didn't go on. Pen pressure, there's that. Let's try it first like that, size it way down. Same kind of effect there from the, the start. Let's see about the feathering. Yeah, that already feels a lot better. So that's what I wanted for my downward kind of inking effect, downward pulls. And see how it's giving that nice little, let's zoom up on that and show you. So it's giving us that nice little wedge shape. It's cleaner than it is over here. That's what I like. And I can already tell by, by doing that, that I'm going to get a nice kind of crow quill effect, which is what I was after. So now when I do my cross hatching, let's see how it works on an angle. Still works pretty good on an angle as well. Yeah, so that's that's actually a little bit better. And I would just keep playing with that. Really try some variation to that. You see what's uh, what I'm doing here and get in there and play around. I'll make these available on my Deviant uh, for download as well. So be sure to check those out if you think these would help you. And that's it. And that's then from there, it's just experiment and do in a variety of your cross hatching, your texture lines, your stippling, you know, just get in there and and play around and see what you can come up with. So hopefully this video has been beneficial for you. If it has, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps me progress the channel and keep bringing you new content. As always, I thank you for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Keep drawing. Keep having fun.